If you've been watching the other videos within this series, you've seen me go over the differences between haploid, diploid, triploid, and hexaploid cells to understand what ploidy means. You've seen a comparison of mitosis and meiosis to where we talked about those key stages and what is happening during those key stages. And so a way to kind of test yourself to know if you truly do understand what's going on during mitosis and meiosis and the difference between homologous pairs and ploidy and chromosomes and everything like that are questions like this. I feel like these are kind of the hardest sorts of questions during cell division. And if you can draw these things, if you understand what is happening in a question like this, you probably understand all of those other ideas. And so what's going on here is I want you to draw a cell that has these characteristics. And so we could start anywhere. I'm going to start with this one just because this is metaphase, just regular metaphase. So that means that this is mitosis. And so that's probably the cell division process that you understand the best. Most everybody seems to grab onto mitosis the first. So we're told that the cell, for this cell, 2n equals 6. That means that there are two chromosomes inside of every homologous pair and that the total number of chromosomes is 6. Well, if there's 6 total, but we've got two chromosomes instead of every one of these homologous sets, that means that there are three chromosomes initially, but there's two members of each of these homologous pairs, right? These would be homologous chromosomes. And that's how we end up with six total chromosomes. So we've got three chromosomes, and then we've got another three sets of those chromosomes. These have got the same genes, but different alleles. Well, if we've got six total chromosomes and it is metaphase of mitosis, that means our cell's gonna look like this. It's gonna be elongated. We've got centrioles at either end. I've gotta draw six chromosomes because it's a diploid cell. That's how many it has. And if it's metaphase in mitosis, all of those chromosomes are gonna be lined up vertically on top of one another. And when this cell divides, you're gonna end up with six chromosomes on this side, six chromosomes on that side, but they're going to look like stripes instead of like X's. They're gonna have one chromatid. So that's kind of to get us started. Now we go to the next one. Let's go over here to this one. 2n equals four, but this, and I take it back. Let's do this one. 2n equals eight, but this is gonna be anaphase one, okay? So we're starting with the diploid cell, and if it's anaphase one, that means that it's right at the beginning, and so we haven't reduced chromosome number yet. Remember that if we look at mitosis versus meiosis, for meiosis, you don't have that reduced chromosome number until the second phase. So since this is anaphase one, that means we still have all eight chromosomes. And so this cell would be elongated if it's during anaphase. We've got our centrioles at either end. I've got to draw eight chromosomes, right? And it's anaphase one. Well, this is where it gets tricky. If this was anaphase of mitosis, that means I would do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'd draw little Vs to represent the chromosomes and I'd have eight on this side and eight on that side. Well, remember that if it is meiosis, anaphase one, that indicates meiosis, then that means that the chromosomes did not line up that way. The chromosomes lined up side by side. They did not line up vertically. So that means that I need to draw eight chromosomes, but they were lined up side by side. So that means that initially it was like two, 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 right? They were lined up side by side. If it's anaphase, they're already separating. And so that means I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And these chromosomes are being pulled to either pole. Okay, so there still are eight total chromosomes because it's the first set, but they didn't line up in the same way since it's meiosis, so we have entire chromosomes with two chromatids on either side rather than just the single stripes like you would see if they only had one chromatid. Now I come over here to metaphase two. So in this one, 2n equals 12. That means we started out with 12 chromosomes, but we're in the second phase of meiosis. Well, if we're in the second phase of meiosis, then that means we've already reduced the chromosome number in each cell by half. So if it is two, you know, meiosis two at all, that means we don't start with 12 chromosomes, we start with six. If we're looking at metaphase, then at metaphase, all of those chromosomes are lined up. So I've got my centrioles at either side, my chromosomes are in the middle, and remember, I'm drawing six of them because it is metaphase two. 
those six chromosomes, now the next question, is do I draw them side by side the way we saw over here or vertically up and down the way we saw them over here? Well, remember that during the second phase of meiosis, all we want to do is split up sister chromatids. So if we want to split up sister chromatids, then those chromosomes should be lined up vertically. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes. And my spindle would be on either end of those chromosomes. It's about to pull them apart. Now we come over here to anaphase two. Last one. So we're starting with 2n equals 4, right? That means our diploid cell had four chromosomes at the very beginning. Well, this is meiosis 2. So if it's meiosis 2, just like we saw over here, the chromosome number has already been reduced. That means that this cell isn't going to have four chromosomes. It's going to have two chromosomes. All right, so we're going to draw true two chromosomes. But now the next question is, what orientation are those chromosomes going to have? And then what are they going to look like if it's anaphase? So if it's meiosis 2, that means that at metaphase, the chromosomes lined up vertically, up and down, just like we saw over here. So we started out with two chromosomes right in the middle. Boom, boom. But now it's anaphase. So during anaphase, are those chromosomes together like an X? Or have they pulled apart into individual stripes because the centromere is let go? And if it's anaphase, it's a second option. Our chromosomes have already been pulled apart, so that means I'm going to draw one, two, one, two. So temporarily, I know that we have four chromosomes in this cell, but that's because it's anaphase. Initially, we only had two. And so if the diploid number is four chromosomes and it is anaphase two, that means that the chromosomes have been pulled apart and we had two of them and they would have been lined up vertically if it's meiosis two, and so that's why we have them split apart like we do in this picture.